HyperX says the Quadcast is an all-inclusive microphone for streaming, podcasts, gaming, and pretty much any other sounds you might want to record. We're going to run it through some tests and see what it can do. Right out of the box, the mic comes fully assembled and attached to its desktop stand. It's got some soft rubber pads on the base and allows for a little bit of angle adjustment with a tension knob on the back. And they also included a mount adapter with 3 8 and 5 8 inch threads so that you can get it mounted up on a boom arm if you want to get it off your desk and out of the way. The mic's suspended by an external shock mount and that's hopefully going to help keep unwanted vibrations from making their way into your audio recordings. A little later in the video when we get into the audio testing, I'm going to bang around on a mechanical keyboard and see how well that shock mount performs. Build quality feels good, it's made from a combination of metal and some hard plastics, and all together the mic, the stand, and the 3 meter long USB cable weigh just over 700 grams. On the back we have a micro USB port and a headphone jack so you can monitor your audio in real time as you're recording or streaming. And by the way, if you go with the RGB model, the Quadcast S, you'll be happy to know they got rid of that micro USB port and instead went with USB-C, which is nice. Just above the shock mount, there's a selection dial for the pickup pattern. You can choose from stereo, omni, cardioid, and bi-directional. Most people picking up the Quadcast are probably going to set that to cardioid and then never touch it again, but it is nice to have a few extra options just in case. Now you have to remember HyperX sees this as an all-in-one, do-it-all type of microphone solution, so it kind of makes sense that they put all that stuff on there. The very bottom of the mic functions as a turnable gain knob, so you can just reach down and easily make adjustments without having to rely on any software. I'm a big fan of having external controls on any kind of desktop microphone, and that's especially true when I'm using it for gaming. When I'm gaming, the last thing I want to do is have to alt-tab and jump into a software application to change settings, and I also don't want to have to program and use any kind of macros or anything like that. So having an adjustable gain knob or any other type of external controls is a huge plus for me. The top of the quadcast is one big touch-sensitive mute button. Tapping will toggle the mute and also switch the lighting on and off to let you know when the mic's hot. That way you don't have any accidental or embarrassing moments on stream. For people that have a lot of pop in their voice, the quadcast has a built-in filter to help reduce and smooth out those plosive sounds. A lot of people will just throw an external pop filter in front of their mic and call it a day, and those work just fine, but they're not really for me. Like, I don't like having extra bulk on my setup, and I also think they're really ugly, so I really like the fact that this one's got it built right in. All right, now let's jump into some audio tests and see what the quadcast can do. Right now you're listening to the HyperX quadcast in the cardioid pickup mode. So this one here is supposed to block out all the unwanted noise happening behind the microphone and just focus on my voice as I'm talking into it. This is going to be the mode that most people want to focus on for gaming, streaming, podcasting. Basically, if you're a solo person talking into the mic, this is where you want to be. So keep in mind, I've got this computer running right here. It's making all kinds of noise with fans. There's a giant graphics card right here. There's three different video lights running in this room that all have fans to keep them cool. So there's a lot of ambient noise. So it'll be really interesting to see how much of that is getting picked up by this mic. Now, one of the big tests that I like to do when I test these mics as well is you want to see how much vibration can make its way into the mic. And you know that could be something that ruins your recording if you're not careful. So this one's got that built-in shock mount. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that performs. So I've got a linear red switch mechanical keyboard right here. I'm going to go ahead and bang around on it, do some typing and see if there's any of those sounds getting picked up by the mic. And we'll just do a little WASD action as if we were gaming. Now I've taken the quadcast and put it on the other side of the keyboard. And this is a test that I think is really important. And if you've watched any of my mic videos, you know that I always do this because most people are not gonna want a microphone, especially one this size, sitting right up in front of their face. Like it gets so distracting because it's so big and just so there with that red light and everything like that, that you're gonna wanna move it. And as soon as you do that, you change up the recording situation. Number one, you increase the distance to the microphone capsule, which means you're gonna need a little bit more gain or bring up the levels in post. Um, and that can introduce some more background noise and some static and stuff like that and some microphones. Um, and the other thing is it's gonna pick up more keyboard sounds because now it is situated behind the keyboard. So remember, cardioid pickup pattern picks up what's in front of it. Well, now the keyboard's in front of it. So let's go ahead and bang around on the keyboard in this situation and see what this sounds like. and a little WASD action.
Now to give you an idea what some of those other pickup patterns sound like, I'm gonna go ahead and switch through them now. The one you're listening to right here is bi-directional. So you're supposed to be able to have two different people talking into the mic. Can be useful, I guess, in a situation where let's say you're doing an interview where you're both facing each other. You could put the mic in the middle and ideally capture decent audio on either side. Next in line on the dial is cardioid, and you already heard what that one sounds like extensively. I think it's the best one, like I mentioned before, it's gonna be the most ideal. But anyways, this is what it sounds like in the context of all the other ones as well. This is an omnidirectional pattern, so it's picking up everything around the microphone. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume I'm getting a lot of different uh, sounds from my computer, from all those fans I was talking about before. This is probably the worst one you could choose from of all of the patterns that's on here, but it's there if you really wanna capture the sound of an entire room. And finally, we have a stereo pickup mode on here, and this is what it sounds like. So this could be useful if you wanna do like some ASMR or something like that and talk into either side of the mic and have that show up in one headphone or one earphone or the other. That's what that's gonna do for you. This is a really popular setup with streamers and podcasters especially, where you completely ditch the desktop mic stand and instead go for an isolated boom arm. And if you remember earlier, I showed you that little adapter that came in the box with the quadcast. If you take that and screw it onto the end of the boom arm, you can get your quadcast completely off your desk. And then we can bang around on this keyboard all day long, all we want, and there's never gonna be any vibrations gutting into your audio and ruining it. So this is a really good way to set up your mic. And I am back in that cardioid pattern, by the way, just so you're aware. Um, I'm sure it sounds awesome. I'll listen to this after before we jump back into the rest of the video, but this is a really good way to set up your mic if you don't mind spending a little bit extra and getting a separate boom arm and just getting rid of that desktop stand altogether. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of that audio quality after listening to those tests. I'll tell you what I think. I think it sounds great. And keep in mind, I didn't do anything to it. I didn't edit or enhance it in any way. The only thing I did was adjust the audio levels so that it matches the rest of the video. And you know what? It's good, like it just sounds great right out of the box. And that's what I think makes this microphone worth getting. It's just a nice, rich, full bodied sound. Like, what am I describing a bottle of wine? Oh, the aroma is so amazing. No, seriously though, this microphone just sounds rich and full and the audio just sounds finished. It sounds like it's already been edited and that's just the way that it comes right out of the mic. And that's important because it means you're not gonna have to waste a whole bunch of time in post-production making all kinds of adjustments to get everything sounding good. And it's a really big deal if you're streaming where you don't have time to do that anyway. Everything's just going out live in real time as you're talking, it's being broadcast out to your audience. I knew there was a lot of hype surrounding this microphone and after testing it out for myself, I think it's justified. It's offering really good audio quality and the thing looks amazing. Like, I don't even care if I can record Cord with it. I just want to put it on my desk so I can look at it. MSRP on this guy is $139 and it's been out on the market for a while so you should look out for deals if you're interested in picking one up. I have seen it go on sale quite a few times so you can probably save yourself some cash if you're willing to be a little bit patient with it. Now if this whole red color scheme is not your thing, you should check out the Quadcast S. That one's pretty much the same thing but it has RGB lighting that you can control and change the colors and then it also has a USB-C port so it gets rid of that micro USB which sucks and goes with a USB-C port which is a lot more flexible. And that one's only around $20 more. So check that one out as well. You can have purchasing links for both of those down in the description, along with all the tech specs and all that sort of stuff. Make sure you get subscribed and uh, we'll see you soon.